Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Lewis Basketball Network. It is your boy, Lewis, and I am back once again with another banger with yet another video. Make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to always keep receiving the latest content I provide. I truly appreciate you guys, man, for taking the time to watch my videos. And make sure at the end of each video, make sure to share this video. Only helps the channel grow. Truly appreciate it. So you're probably asking yourself, man, man, Lou, that is an awesome awesome long sleeve shirt you got there man that merch is looking lit right now as a matter of fact for all my game of Thrones fans out there and i am a huge game of Thrones fans i am now letting you know that yes this is a long sleeve gray game of Thrones shirt and you can find it at target only cost 17 dollars. and first of all as i always say man as it is man i am a huge game of thrones fan uh, I can't wait. It's going to be April 14th, man, at 8 o'clock. It is the final season. I am so sad to see such a wonderful, such a wonderful, basically, man, wonderful franchise right there. That is The Game of Thrones, man, by George R.R. R. Martin, man. Incredible show. Uh, the cast is just incredible, man. I enjoy it, man. That show got me hooked from the first episode of season one. Uh, seeing my man Ned Stark, man, uh, yo, just, you know, the Tyrells, the Lannisters, the Starks, you know. The Greyjoys, I mean, it's like, it's just, you know, just a, just a great, incredible show and great, incredible actors. And like it always says right here, if you guys can see that, it says winter is coming. Coming April 14th for one last season, 2019, man. Eight o'clock and you could only catch it on HBO. Now, on to today's topic, man. So, first things first, I'm not going to show the video. You're just going to pretty much hear it on basically, you know, what... The, the three, six, three members of the 3-6 Mafia are going to talk about and how the Lakers had an obviously failed season, starting with Chris Broussard, the flip-flopping, pathetic LeBron apologist who says that he is going to talk, him and LeBron apologists will talk about LeBron throughout the rest of the regular season, even if he's not playing and for the rest of the playoffs. As you guys know, LeBron has been shut down for the rest of the season due to load management and his sore left groin. Uh, he will miss, and there was no point, so LeBron James will miss a total of 27 games, which is the most missed games LeBron has missed in his career. But just last year in year 15, LeBron played all 82 games, played the first 10 minutes of the first quarter to score 10 points to keep his regular season streak of 10, of 10 points or more in 866 consecutive games. It was such a big deal, and it was only the first time he played all 82 in year 15. And now we're talking about an obvious field season when the same apologist said Vegas had them as the fourth best odds to win an NBA title. They had them going to the Western Conference Finals, and then now they're not even a playoff team because they got eliminated by Triangelo and the Brooklyn Nets. But anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Well, I think we, we, there were two positives to this meeting that they had with the players and the players only meeting. I so two positives, huh? Chris Broussard? The only thing positive about the meeting was you're going to say how players voiced their opinion on how, you know, they got to talk about, you know, the issues that they had with LeBron James and pretty much how the season went with all the, the distractions they had and how the issue with Anthony Davis destroyed the team morale. LeBron is saying, OK, I agree to it because you know why he's going to agree to it? Because he knows at the end of this year, it's most likely that Luke Walton is going to get fired and pretty much most of those guys on that roster are going to get gutted and traded. So let me ask you a question, America, Laker fans, to super, NBA superstar and star players. Why would I want to risk my career playing for such a dysfunctional organization that has no direction from the front office and then play with a player who's going to be 35 years old next season and refuses to adjust his game and only play in one play style? You know, I got to ask myself, like, how is it that he's going to, you know, be able to play one play style? I'm sorry, but uh, why would I want to risk my career? So then the meet, so then the hot media would be that's going to be the fuel for them to make excuses, put the blame on you and not blame LeBron James. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. I love the fact that the young guys felt 
confident enough to voice their opinion. And I love the fact that LeBron accepted it. That's that's a positive issue. Once again, Broussard, he loves it because he knows that Luke Walton is going to be gone and those players are going to get traded. So if I'm a superstar, why would I want to risk my career where I can make a name for myself, make a legacy for myself, and tie my career to LeBron James so that I get no credit and he gets all the credit when at this point LeBron should sacrifice his stats and be a complimentary player. Yes, I said it, ladies and gentlemen. LeBron, at this point of his career, needs to be a complimentary player to a championship team. He can no longer be the best player leading a championship team. The XYZ stats, the selective true stats, as I keep saying, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to repeat it again. XYZ selective true stats will not lead him to win a championship. It's just going to lead to more narratives and more excuses. Those he respected, those guys. So... Look, he's not respecting. Failed season. There's no question. But injuries, no three point shooting. You know, Anthony Davis. Didn't you guys say he was going to make the Western Conference Finals? Now it's, it's obviously a failed season because of the injuries. Now it's you want to include everybody because it's like LeBron is getting too much blame. Come on, man. Come on. Enough with the injury excuses. Enough. The Lakers were in fourth place. I'm not getting into that. I'm going to say it again. I'm not going to get into that. If you come at me with that BS talking about fourth place, I will ether and murk you right then and there. Clippers were one. Grizzlies were two. Rockets were 13th. Where are we right now? Rockets are third. Clippers are fifth. Grizzlies are out of the playoffs. A lot has changed since Christmas. And it's funny that they keep talking about it because in that Christmas game, LeBron was not even really ball dominant. They were moving the ball, playing defense, playing inspired, and gave the Warriors a lot of problems. They gave them a lot of problems. And even when LeBron went down in the third quarter, they didn't let up and miss a skip a beat because Ray John Rondo was there and his leadership helped the Lakers stay engaged and continue to play hard. When LeBron missed those 17 games, all these reports of how he was recording with two chains, because you remember the song came ar right around out when he came back. Same thing of filming on his new show. So it wasn't just the fact that he was injured. And his reports and his inconsistencies on his injuries have been have been baloney. It's like you don't even know what to believe. That's why I say that the injury thing, I keep saying it in my gut feeling, LeBron Low-key was faking his injury, and he actually could have came back a lot sooner. I don't want to hear that. Oh, well, you know, the groin injury, it's not an easy injury because it's around the lower leg area. I understand that. But the fact that his reports are so inconsistent just makes me believe that this injury was just a, nu a, nu a nuisance to try to put the Laker players hostage to see who he could get traded. That's why he was getting on guys constantly talking about, oh, if you're not comfortable in, in this environment, then you shouldn't be here. Dude, you joined that team. They didn't join you. Like, get out of here. It's a, it's, All of it. Well, Lee, yeah, obviously Luke's going to be gone. So it, it's a failure, but at best, no, nobody, I don't think you even thought they were getting to the finals. No. So at, at best. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Broussard just proved how much of a fanboy he is, man. <laughs> Same thing with Squidward. <laughs> You said it was possible that they could beat the Warriors and make it to the finals at the start of this season. <laughs> and now Chris turned around and looked at him and said, you didn't think it was going to make the finals, right? Oh, no, no. <laughs> we knew it was an experimental season, but I thought they would. You, you, you see? You see? You see? Now they want to say we knew it was an experiment season. You see? Etherin and Merck and these cats out here in these NBA streets. I caught you, Chris Broussard. You want to come out here and talk about now we knew it was a wash-up season, we knew it was an experiment season? <laughs> Yo, these guys killed me, man. They think, you see? And the LeBron stands are going to fall for every single one of their words. They're complete liars. And if I want to, I could pull up the video to where they said they were going to make the Western Conference Finals and possibly make the finals. I could pull it up. I, trust me. Trust me, I will like I will expose them hard body, man. Hard body if they if I want to.
But I'm going to be nice. I'm, I, I, like Stephen A. said, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be real nice. But I thought they would make progress. And I thought they'd get ex playoff experience. And I th You thought they were going to make progress, um, Squidward, when you were agreeing that Luke should be fired and the, so part of the team should be traded because of the fact that they weren't playing well? You was getting on Ingram. You was getting on Kuzma. You even got on Rondo at times. And you want to sit there and say that, oh, wait, wait, we thought that I thought that they were going to make progress? You know, you need to go back to Bikini Bottom where you came from, go back under the sea. You need to go play your clarinet and then go to the Krusty Krab and stand at the cash register like you do best. But we would learn something more about the young guys. And that's the other, the, the, the sidebar story to the LeBron injury and the Anthony Davis stuff and uh, the, the bad coaching is what do we know about Lonzo? going into year three that we didn't know going into year two. Well, what we knew was is that Lonzo, Lonzo's impact on rebounding and on the defensive end and on his passing ability was strongly felt when he got injured against the Rockets in late January. Um, that's what we know about Lonzo from now year two, about to head into year three. I don't, I don't know anything. What do we know? He's a, he was a pretty good defender. Right. What right. do we know about Ingram that we didn't know going, in, going into year four that we didn't know going into year three? I'm not sure, except for he has a major health issue, not just an injury, a health issue. What? Yeah, and we also know that even though he got off to a slow start playing for LeBron because they played the same position, LeBron kept trying to implement his LeBron system with Brandon Ingram, and Brandon Ingram is not a stand-up shooter. He's not a spot-up shooter. But what happened? When LeBron got injured and he had the ball in his hands a lot more, he was able to make plays, and, LeBron, and even after the All-Star break, he was pretty much the best player on the team. Don't tell me with LeBron. LeBron is those empty stats, man. I don't want to hear it. Brandon Ingram, I'm going to repeat again, was the best player post All-Star break before he went out for the rest of the season with his um, condition in his shoulder. LeBron was after himself once he knew that the AD trade wasn't going to fall because of the mistake that he told AD to go public and demand the trade. And then DeMarcus Cousins even, even tried to cover for your boy and said that once they knew that um, I wanted, um, I was pretty much gone. He didn't want to stay here. When report was, Anthony Davis didn't want you in New Orleans. I wonder why the media doesn't talk about that. What do we know about Kuz that we didn't know going into this year? That Simple. I knew that Kuz had the guts to push LeBron to play defense and close out to the shooter. That's what I know. He got punked out by a second-year player. That's what I know. We do now. So we, you didn't even gain information. You didn't gain experience. You didn't gain the information is, is that LeBron lost the respect of his teammates and that LeBron is not a good teammate. That's the information we got. What we also got was LeBron tried to implement his system, and it didn't pan out because he thought he was going to get away with it. And he's still going to try to do it, so don't be surprised once again heading into next year. Information. You didn't gain continuity amongst the team. You did That's his fault. A legitimate, for the first time in his career, concern about LeBron's durability, which has never been a question mark for him or for any team he's been on. So I wonder why. I wonder why it's never been in question. Just wondering. Guys, I wonder why. In every way, this has been a failed season. There's not even like a silver lining. Well, at least that midseason trade we made, we know you actually gave away your young good center for nothing. There, there, There's no part of this season that you can hold on to and say, okay, this makes me feel better. Uh, I know you're a LeBron fan, but I've been a fan of Lakers for LeBron fan, hmm, yeah, LeBron fan is an understatement. I mean, all acorn nutsack in his mouth and all that, man, with the balls dripping, smacking the bottom of his chin. Long time. And there's some really diehard Lakers fans. I'm going to give them a silver lining. I never thought Luke Walton was a championship coach. Okay. So we got rid of the coach. Luke's rotations at times may be pretty bad, but he's getting too much of the scapegoat route here. Um, Luke is honestly, he can be a pretty good coach. I just feel like Luke, his demeanor is kind of soft. I think if he was a more hard-nosed coach, I think he would have more respect for the players, including LeBron. The problem is LeBron wants yes men to where he gets the yes light, the yes green light to everything that he demands. That's what he wants. Once he gets that, that's when he can control his narratives. And then that's when he makes all those excuses to the media. And the 3-6 Mafia not only approves it, but they attack all other players around the team and players around the league. That's why. So at least we can move on. So if we are going to have a parade, I didn't think Luke was going to be up there. 
as the coach of the Lakers. So at least we moved on to that aspect. And I do believe we don't know that yet. And this is why the Lakers offseason is going to be very crucial into what kind of year they're going to have into year two. Um, if they strike out in free agency, we might be looking at another losing season if LeBron chooses not to change his game because the Lakers have some good pieces. Uh, we figured that out. I mean, just last night they beat the Pelicans by 28. Now, I know there was no AD, um, but even then, so, like, you saw Rondo had 24 and 12. I mean, McGee had 23 and 13 with three blocks. I'm saying these guys can play. And without LeBron, they actually moved the ball. And that was without Kyle Kuzma with a foot injury. So they can play. It's just, again, they were so condescending of the LeBron system in the second half because he didn't get what he wanted. That the coach they're going to hire will have an influence because I believe it will be Ty Lue. And Ty Lue has known through the basketball. I literally want to take my water bottle and I want to literally throw it at my damn tablet when he just said that. Ty Lue had health problems. Ty Lue looked like he didn't even have a clue on what he was doing in that, on that Cleveland roster, on that Cleveland team for the last two, nearly three full seasons that he was with LeBron. LeBron wanted him because he was good friends with him where he could pretty much, Ty Lue would say yes to everything that he asked for. Ty Lue had health concerns. And you're saying that Ty Lue was the answer when Nick Wright and Chris Carter, you two knuckleheads, were ripping him apart and saying how he needed to be fired last year. With the two different rosters that he had. Caught you on your buffoonery in your lies, man. Analytics and everything, he knows. Even though they, in Cleveland, it took them a couple times to go to get it right. They know the type of players that need to be. No, according to you guys, they never got it right. What the hell are you talking about, man? Yo, you need to stop, you need to stop talking basketball, honestly. You and Nick need to be off the show. He needs to go to Bikini Bottom. And you need to go see if you can get your memory check because apparently you know everybody. So I need to get that little machine from uh, that Will Smith and these guys use from Men in Black and just literally flash his eyes. That way I could be like, oh, so that he could just lose his damn memory because he does not have no damn clue on what he's talking about. So even if you say, Palink, I don't know if he can do it. Magic, don't know if he can do it. The silver line is they got rid of the coach. I believe the next coach is going to be Ty Lue. And I know that Ty understands. Now, if so we just had Cleveland 2.0 for this season. So now we're going to upgrade to Cleveland 3.0 by bringing back Ty Lue. Yo, if you bring back Ty Lue, this is just going to be a whole nother mess of that LeBron once again can control the narrative situation. To say he's never played for a credible coach because didn't LeBron just win a championship with Ty Lue in 2016? And Ty Lue has a career plus 600 win percentage as the coach, as LeBron's coach. When he was coaching the Cavaliers? I mean, I'm just saying, bro. They don't have the players. Because I know Ty. You know Ty Will. It would have been an obvious. He called him, he called him Ty Will instead of Ty Lou. See? He don't, know, he, don't, he don't know who Ty Lou is. Stop it. That Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson are not fit out for this job if they put together a roster like they did similar to this year's roster. Magic is an idiot. But also, LeBron was the one who asked for those players. I mean... We're just going to wipe that under the rug, right? And it's not just that Ty Lue knows the players that need to be around LeBron. He knows the style that a LeBron James team has to play. Now, maybe it'll be different at the end, at the very end of his career, that he's going to have to change the way he plays. But for the Lakers to be successful next year, you know what LeBron's going to have to be? LeBron, which is ball dominant, run the offense. Yeah, I don't him. think... <laughs> Squidward, please go back to the Krusty Krab, please. I, I think it's, at this point in his career, I don't think he can. First of all, that will put more wear and tear on him if he's ball dominant. I think they need to talk. Can you answer this question? Why is it that um, LeBron played more minutes post All-Star break after the groin injury and in the All-Star game he was jumping out of the gym? And they talk about, oh, they need to preserve LeBron's minutes, but he played more minutes. He was padding his stats because he didn't get the AD trade like he wanted. I'm going to just get myself. I'm going to be self-centered. I'm going to care about me. I could care less about y'all. And pack it in for the season. LeBron about being more like a traditional small forward. I think it could challenge for the league scoring title as a small forward. He can give you 39 rebounds. He's going to get his six, seven assists. Just My man, LeBron needs to be just a better teammate. Set screens, set picks, move without the basketball. Go through curls, go through screens. LeBron needs to actually do 
He needs to just actually run plays. He needs to actually make plays. Like enough with this. He can he can he can lead the league in scoring. Like he needs to lead those stats and stuff alone. He needs if he wants to win, he needs to sacrifice his game and sacrifice his stats. Cut it out, Chris Broussard. Ridiculous ass LeBron. Le, 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 LeBron could could lead the league in scoring. Stop it. Because right. he's such a great passer, but have him on the block a little, getting the ball on the elbow. No, he's a good passer. I've seen better passes than LeBron. On the wing, I don't think because it also would make it easier for other players to play around LeBron. Like if you want to go after a Kimball Walker, okay. Kimba with LeBron playing the way LeBron's always played, it's not gonna work. What, Kyrie, Kyrie, right now, hold on, but Kyrie, but. The, it worked with Kyrie. Kyrie was a better... And, 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 and. Listen, Kyrie was a better shooter, but let's be real. Him and LeBron didn't even fit. But wait till what... L- listen to what Chris Broussard says. Shooter off the, off the ball than Kimba is. So That's Ky- a good point. And Kyrie's a better player. Like, I, they weren't a perfect fit, but Kyrie was so good and LeBron... Wait a minute. Didn't you say that Kyrie complimented LeBron so well, now they weren't a really a good fit? And people saying, oh, Kyrie had a career year playing with LeBron. Kyrie got more shot attempts. That doesn't mean he got better. His game never really changed. He just did the same thing that he had been doing with LeBron from the moment LeBron got there. He just got more shots because LeBron deferred to him a little bit more. But he didn't make him better. Cut it out. LeBron does not make teammates better. That's a myth. It's been a long time myth. You apologists have been falling for it for years. LeBron was so good. That it could work. Like, I don't Once again, as I say, the le- X, Y, Z overrated selective truth stats. Write it down, ladies and gentlemen. Take notes. I don't think at this stage of his career, LeBron can be the system and lead a team to a championship. See, and I... And Ding! I think that unless they have a total roster renovation this offseason, that you are going to have to rely on... Why can't he work with the roster that he has, Nick? Squidward. LeBron to be the system for one it's more. Not, it's not going it's, it, it's to wear him out at 35 years of age, and you're not going to win. You're not going to beat five-man teams. But that's why he's also quit, because he knows his system can't win, especially when he's going against better teams and with, with a better system that actually plays a team system with stars, even without stars. Dirk and older Tim Duncan. Andre Godala, even though Curry should have been the MVP. KD two years in a row. He had trouble doing that in his prime. You know, beating five man teams that move the ball, guys can shoot. It's not. It, he, Did Chris just expose LeBron James? He had trouble with it in his prime? Hmm. He needs to be more a part of a system. And that would, like I said, it, it, guys know their roles more. I don't have to wonder, am I bringing it up? Is LeBron bringing it up? Okay. If I'm a point guard and LeBron's bringing it up now, now I got to adjust on that possession to something else. So I, I just think it'd be easier for other guys to fit around. Let's go back to this. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it because they pretty much talk nonsense after that. But Chris Broussard, as much as he's an apologist, he's speaking facts. So, like I said, man, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Bless up, one love, peace. Thanks for watching.